For our project, we want to classify fruits and vegetables. So for example, we'd like to classify this as a donut peach. So we train the model with a single dense layer that in theory should not have worked because of the large number of fruits and vegetables and the relatively small number of images per fruit and vegetable. But somehow we are able to obtain an 86% testing accuracy. And because of this, we knew something was wrong with the data. So when we looked at the data set, we realized for every fruit and vegetable, the pictures look almost the same because there's the same lighting, same background, it's just slightly rotated. So instead of learning, the model just memorized what each fruit and vegetable looked like. For example, we have this ripe avocado here and just compared it with the testing data. So when we started testing with our own pictures, like this picture of a cherry, we got a prediction of a red pear. When we tested a tomato, we got a prediction of a red banana. So even though it said it's accurate, it's not actually accurate. And this is a really good example of why bad data sets can ruin your model if you're not careful. So this project is on the classification of the sentiment of Twitter posts. Uh, so the first thing we did is we put our necessary functions in this file, where we also did the pre-processing of the data so it can be used by the model. We trained the model and exported it for use in other files. So this file is a module for a project. What we basically did is we took the functions of the model from our previously trained data and made it into an explorable format for easier use so that the model can be used um, outside this file. Here we essentially implemented and tested our code. So we imported our module and our model, and then we selected two random IDs and had the model output its prediction and also output the true label. So here you can see both times it gets it correct and predicts that it's negative. And then overall, we had an accuracy rate of about 81%. This project is on music generation through random sampling. I take in an, uh, a subset of input songs and use them to generate a probability matrix as to what note will come next based on the context of the generated song. Uh, I can then take those note names and use the mappings of frequency values that I have here, uh, and then take those frequencies and turn those into pressure values, which can then be played through the speakers of any given computer. Uh, I have a sample generated song and this is using pure tones which is just pure frequencies it's not uh, so it sounds very artificial it's not like an actual instrument but sound hi this is my image to image recognition project so in this project i trained a model to take in an image and produce k corresponding images that are most similar to that image um, i did this by using the coco data set which contains corresponding images and captions so I use that data to train what a good image to image should be. Um, here is my loss and accuracy model graph. So I so it the the accuracy is around eighty five percent every single time. Um, I also tested it by putting in some random images. So I put in a broccoli soup, and it outputted five similar images. And similarly, I put in a gaming console and a TV, and it also produced five images that it thought was more similar. For my project, I essentially wanted to train a dense neural network on a data set of images of cats and other objects. So what I did first was I loaded in the data and split it into test and train data. So I had about 250 images in the entire data set, which is relatively small, but I was able to figure out how to use 200 for training and 50 for testing. And then I printed out what some of these images looked like. So these are the images of non-cat objects and these are the images of cat objects. And then what I did was I created my model and my model had a total of three dense layers. And after creating my model, I hypertuned some of the parameters, and I also then finally trained my model. And uh, I trained it to output zero if a cat wasn't identified, and a one if it did find a cat. And for example, in this image over here, there's a picture of a cat, and so it successfully outputted one. This project takes an image with handwritten digits and then outputs these digits as text. So first, let's show how we detect where the digits are using our Flecto model. This model detects where the black pixels are and then draws a box around them. So then, then we can pass it to the um, detect digits method where we return a list of images of digits. So for example, one of the images we have is this four from this four million. So then we take this list of bounded images. Uh, well, actually first we convert it into the proper dimensions in order to put it into our identifying model. So this model is a Lynette convolutional neural network with two convolutional layers and two dense layers. And for each image, it returns a list of scores based on how similar that image is to every digit from 0 to 9. We take the highest score and return that as our prediction for what the digit actually is. So as you can see here, this number 4 million is also correctly predicted by our model to be 